Question. When you send something to the cloud, what does that really mean? Where does it go? Is it safe? Does it disappear when it gets sunny? At this point in the internet age, the cloud has become such an overly used buzzword that hopefully most of you know that it's not really a cloud, right? Well, that's obviously what it isn't, but why don't we find out what it is? Cue the wibbly wobbly time travel stuff. Back in the golden age of computing, computers were house-sized behemoths manufactured by audio, appliance, and thermostat companies and were called mainframes. If you wanted to use the power of one of these mainframes, you would have to connect to it using what was called a terminal. Look how happy she is. Kinda. Basically, you would type out a command, the mainframe computer would process it, and then send the results back to your screen. And it could do this for multiple users at the same time. This type of setup was known as a centralized local area network. And if you connected multiple mainframes together, you could create a decentralized wide area network that could span across the country. Starting to see a cloud here? Yeah, me neither. All right, let's continue. The problem with wide area networks at this stage was that they couldn't cross communicate. IBM mainframes would only talk to other IBM mainframes, GE would only talk to GE, and so on. But using the wide area network as inspiration, Joseph Carl Robert Licklitter, a director within the Pentagon's Advanced Research Projects Agency, envisioned a medium of informational interaction for governments, institutions, corporations, and individuals that he called the Intergalactic Computer Network. His work led to the first platform independent computer network called ARPANET that could connect computers no matter what brand. ARPANET. Yeah, it definitely looks more like a net at this point than a cloud, but we're getting there. ARPANET inspired similar networks to be created. By the 90s, this growing, wiry net of interconnected computers ballooned into what we now know as the Internet, and was also characterized by network engineers as the cloud. Definitely looks more like a cloud now, doesn't it? But also evolving at the same time was the mainframe itself. Within a decade, it became smaller and cheaper until mainframe power computers could be found in practically every home across the country. There was no longer a need to rely on terminals to connect to a mainframe for your computing. Every family could do this with their own computer, creating and storing their own data on their own private mainframes. You would think that this would have phased out terminal and mainframe computing, but all contraire. The cloud and personal computers collided, connecting every computer to every other computer on the internet. Toss into that the invention of the web browser, and more and more tasks transitioned from being done on computers to being done online, using the cloud to do computing. So we went from storing our personal data on someone else's computer, to storing it more privately on our own computers, back to storing it on someone else's. But what if you wanted the best of both worlds, the ability to cloud compute on all your devices without having to store your data on someone else's server? This can actually be done with any spare computer you have laying around. I'll be using this $35 Raspberry Pi. Time to get tinkering. The first thing you want to do is download the Raspberry Pi own cloud image from this website, and then burn it to an SD card using WinImage, which might take a while. Then plug your SD card into your Raspberry Pi along with a monitor, keyboard, mouse, internet, and power. And then when it boots up, you can go ahead and log in with Pi and OwnCloud as a password. The next thing you want to do is run Raspi Config and expand the SD card to use all the space. If you're using wireless, you want to boot into the desktop by typing start X and then run the wireless configuration wizard to connect to your wireless. Now we want to set up a static IP, so get back to a command line and type ifconfig to get the IP address and netmask for your connection. Then type sudo vi etc network interfaces, and underneath the WLAN type this, setting the address to an unused IP on your network and the gateway to the first IP of the address range. Now save it and restart your Raspberry Pi. When it boots back up, you can open up a web browser from any computer and type in the Raspberry Pi's IP address followed by OwnCloud. Then log in using a new administrative username and password, 
And then from here, you can use the apps pre-installed on OwnCloud, or you can add new ones. I recommend the News app and the Bookmarks app. To extend its functionality, you can also download the desktop app for your computer and the mobile apps for OwnCloud to access your data from most any platform. If you want to access OwnCloud from the cloud and not just from your home network, you will need to set up port forwarding on your router. And if you need help with that, you can watch this video. But what if you don't want to install all these services? What if you just want a Dropbox style cloud service that you can upload your files to? Well, then you can watch this Tinkernut Labs video for how to make your own Raspberry Pi network attached storage device. All right, if you missed them, you can click here to watch my last videos. And if you got any value out of this video and would like to give some value back, please consider sending some Bitcoins my way or donating to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash tinkernut. Stay up to date on more cool projects by following me on Twitter or Google+. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com, where technology and creativity collide.